everyone. Um, I am Yama Dixit. I'm a professor uh, at the Center for Atmospheric Sciences um, at IIT Delhi. Um, so, like, if I start about my journey, I really, I really have to start from where I was born. So, I was born in Meerut, in Western Uttar Pradesh. My parents were not from Meerut, but my, both my parents were working there in government jobs. And I am the second uh, of uh, the four siblings. So, we have three sisters and um, and a younger brother, younger brother who's like. 10 years younger than me so he was so uh, why when i was born uh, in in western up uh, having a girl child was still not uh, kind of considered a very kind of happy uh, occasion so my parents on the other hand were very like you know they were excited they were happy that we have a second child and they started like you know it's the story goes back that you know they started distributing sweets and you know um, uh, and people were like are you crazy you have a, another uh, daughter born like what are you doing um, sort of and then my third uh, 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 my uh, sister was born later so three of us and then um, so for a good eight years uh, it was just the three of us and uh, the society talking about what will you do how you get money for a dowry and, and stuff like that in, which is typical like in UP so I but then we moved to Lucknow and I did my uh, basic education school education in Lucknow um, where my mother was working as a school principal so this was a government girl school and uh, my father was uh, in uh, banking uh, uh, banking uh, job so so i mean going to school again my my, my mom well, had been a great inspiration she was she never told us that we are girls but then you know there was a the sunset pressure from even our relatives that you know you are three girls, raising three girls you need to be careful how you spend and you know that sort of things so but we went to the best schools best convent schools in lucknow I was sent to Delhi. I mean, I wanted to come to Delhi to uh, study. My sister uh, did uh, her undergrad in Tenu, so I followed suit. Uh, I did it in sciences, so I was in Delhi University. I did chemistry honors from Hansraj College. And again, that was a big task because doing just BSc uh, at that point of time and, you know, living in a new, uh, like, capital city, for example, like coming from Lucknow, from a relatively second tier city, uh, people and my relatives were saying, like, why are you sending her there? I mean, she could have done a traditional BSc in Lucknow, for instance, you know, the Lucknow University is not bad. But uh, coming to uh, Delhi was uh, like, you know, a big decision for my family because I was going just for a chemistry honors degree, not, not an engineering or a MBBS degree. I did get through a doctor's a doctoral program, but I didn't pursue medicine because I wanted to be in research and you know, chemistry background research. So, so I moved here. And then from there, I mean, it was hard for my parents to pay for the PG because there was no girls hostel in um, Delhi University undergrad uh, college that I was in, Hansraj College, there was no girls hostel. So it was like, you know, it was a very tiring, but uh, taxing time for my parents financially, but they still continued. And then I moved on to do um, a master's in environmental sciences because of my love for nature. I, I was, um, I, I did top my chemistry honors degree. I was topper of... Uh, my college but I still didn't want to pursue in traditional chemistry I was more like outgoing I like to go out in the field and I like to understand how principles of chemistry can be applied in natural uh, surroundings like natural environment so I, I started uh, I, I uh, sat for the exam and I uh, got through what I was one of the 10 students who uh, got admission in JNU for masters in environmental sciences I was a number ranked number one in that so I did my master's in uh, JNU and from there on, I knew that I'd be doing a PhD. Like uh, before that, I wasn't sure what I'll do. I had plans to do an MBA, maybe making, you know, working on sustainable uh, uh, sustainability or companies who work for, you know, uh, sustainability, uh, sustainable goals that are that were defined during those times. But then, but then like during my master's, I kind of changed my uh, mind and made, started doing more sort of research work. So I did an internship during my summers at and National Institute of Oceanography in Goa. So it was again like, like just research internship to get a taste of uh, how it works and um, um, uh, and you know writing a thesis, project thesis, and stuff like that. So uh, that inspired me again to um, write JRF, which is like which is again um, a research fellowship uh, that the government of India. Um, uh, this is this is a national level exam uh, where you write uh, that exam. And you get uh, paid, like if you kind of get a uh, certain, if you cross that cutoff mark. So I was ranked number one in earth environmental and ocean sciences in that as well. So I knew like, you know, this is my calling. Like, so I knew that moving from chemistry to environmental sciences, again, that was advised against by most of my relatives who are, who are even professors in 
mainstream uh, you know pure sciences and because they were like you know in india is a developing country and would you really think in my mental science is something government of india 10 year 10 years down the line would like you know think about it if you were in the us it would have worked but like i went against the wave did my mental sciences and then also did an mphil to basically stay for a bit in india and save money from my grf uh, the scholarship that i was getting and uh, write gre and toefl exam to go abroad so i did that um for my phd i went to cambridge i had offers from stony brook in the us and also oxford but the project in cambridge was so uh, interesting so the project was mainly looking at indian summer monsoon rainfall and how it has changed in the past and how it had impacted the societies living in on the indian subcontinent now this is something which really attracted me because uh, they it also had an archaeological angle to it so what they were trying to see how in this valley civilization the famous harappan and mohenjodaro civilization on in present day india and pakistan borders um, how how did they respond to changing climate during those times now my my task uh, was to actually uh, look into how the rainfall has changed so i had to give them a climate template basically uh, give them a record of rainfall how it has changed now this had to be reconstructed the rainfall record had to be reconstructed from uh, lake sediments in northwest india so we did like extensive field trips across northwest india looking for good right amount of samples uh, good samples would like you know um, independently record that variability and then um, uh, yeah so uh, uh, the phd ended up publishing uh, good papers and it was like highlighted by media so it was like a good like i would call it like successful phd uh, in terms of achieving the goals that we intended to uh, when we started out uh, so it was like if i could tell you in one line uh, the phd was uh, kind of hinted that there was 200 years of drought during the indus valley civilization when the indus valley civilization was flourishing so the collapse or of the urban centers or you know the whole transformation from cities based cities uh, to village based so kind of going backward was because they, they could not sustain the uh, the complicated society that they had so i gave uh, like our group gave the rainfall uh, data that we reconstructed so it was really good and uh, from then on i moved to uh, uh, do a postdoc uh, in france so i stayed there for 3 uh, years now again looking at rainfall variability but not in india it was more for the mediterranean region so we moved around we we collected uh, ocean sediment cores we went on a research cruise went in the mediterranean sea looked at how it has changed uh, rainfall has changed in like even longer past so like 100000s of years like you know times when dinosaurs were there like those times how was the climate then and how is it changed now the context was that you know we, we know that it's the climate is warming now but do we know when it warmed in the past how did the earth respond so like you know what were who like wh- whether there was human population how did they respond or if not how did the flora and fauna on the earth responded so if we have that knowledge from past uh, climate records we can use them in some way or the other to predict future uh, uh, climate change and its impact on the environment so this was the context and following that um, i got married and i came to singapore with my husband who was in london and we moved to uh, singapore and lived there for four years i had two daughters in singapore so uh, in singapore i was again working as a research fellow looking at now um, the rainfall in the indo pacific region so i reconstruct like i said i reconstruct climate for living or for my my passion is to basically understand how rainfall is changing in various regions and specifically in in tropical regions where monsoon plays a major role in bringing rainfall it's not just a convection normal simple convection rainfall so it's that so yeah so i was in singapore and then uh, both me and my husband are in academia we are both academics and uh, we thought that it's about time during pandemic time we realized like you know what are we doing here far away from our families i know we are following our passion you know and your passion is taking us countries like all over the world but then at some point you need to start thinking like you know where do you want to raise your children and for me especially like you know if i work on monsoon and i need samples i have to go back to india anyway so why not just relocate and this opportunity of coming back to iit delhi uh, came at the right time my both me and my husband got uh, faculty positions here offered last year and we moved and i'm still continuing looking at uh, rainfall and temperature changes 
uh, in this part of the world. And um, yeah, yeah, I think it, it mostly comes from my mother. So my mom comes from a very small uh, town called Kannauj in UP. And so she did not have access to proper schools and even university. So she never went to a proper uh, like college, but she's like first class BA, MA honors. All she did was uh, like, you know, long distance education. So sometimes there was no electricity and, you know, she would go, she would use a Lalton to uh, like just, you know, just to study on, on, on terrace. So, because in the mornings there would be boys lurking around looking at her. So, you know, she would not, she could not study in, in mornings as well. So, you know, she would tell all these hardships that she's gone through. So she did her master's uh, there and then she started. Uh, so when I was, she was expecting me, she thought, you know, she wanted to study more and she was doing her final uh, be it uh, practicals. Uh, bachelor of Education practicals the day I was born. So she, in the morning she was out, uh, 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 like you know, doing practicals and uh, with with the student for her B.Ed degree. And at in the evening I was born. So she just from practical she went straight to the hospital and I was born. So it, that this is a like you know story which which uh, which is like you know I've seen her working. And even when I was doing a master's degree in JNU, she was also doing a master's just to just for the for her passion. She likes studying. So, uh, you know, and then she chose to uh, do a PhD once all, like all our, we all four of us were born. She started, you know, she registered again. She started writing. She, she did a PhD later on uh, in Sanskrit because she, she for, the, for the love of the subject, she, she, she did Sanskrit, you know, as an undergrad and master's and stuff. So for the love, so I've seen her, you know, even raising kids. So we would, we had the help, but we did not have a permanent help living with us. So cooking, cleaning, everything she was doing, and also doing PhD when we were asleep. So, I mean, I've seen her, and also like she, she, uh, she retired last year as a principal of a government um, high school, girls college. Uh, now that because you know her passion for teaching and her passion for, and to be in academia. I mean, she could have joined a, a college which she was getting in one of the remote um, you know villages, but then she chose to be with us. She chose to. Uh, still like just teach young underprivileged girls and that is something you know i've seen and it inspires me to no end because both me and the fact that both me and my mother were doing our masters together hers was second masters because that's out of interest that she was doing and i went on summer vacation and i was looking at her studying and me not studying i was like you know i cannot you know this is something i just it was um it was so inspiring and uh, she has inspired me throughout my life and she never told me that you're uh, I mean I was one of the first ones to get a computer for instance for my thesis no, none of my uh, classmates had a uh, laptop but my mom was like no you so you know she, she had left no stone unturned for me to learn and so this passion for to be in academia came in the very beginning I mean there was only during masters when I thought if, whether I should like you know not choose this or I, I wasn't sure but then, you know, when I went back during my master's uh, summer vacation and I saw her studying and, you know, making notes, mental notes and, you know, writing and reading books. And she has this whole collection in her house, this room with collection of Sanskrit books. And, you know, I mean, all looking at all that, it's just uh, very inspiring. And that has inspired me over the years. My dad, again, comes from a village. And we have, like, we have huge... We have we have a lot of acres and acres of property, if I can say so, in the village. But none of it that is useful. Because of the, yeah, because that's all barren land. Because I, I told my dad, dad, you, why are you always saying that, you know, we have to think about, we'll save money. I was like, you have acres and acres of land. But then, like when I was young, when I was in school, I would, we would go there for vacation in the, you know, home village. And this is a place called Itawa and, you know, um, in Uttar Pradesh, in uh, central Uttar Pradesh. So we would go there and we would like, you know, this is all barren. These, these haven't been irrigated. This, the rainfall has declined over the years. And uh, so that, actually clicked at some point and also like we, we used to watch like discovery channels as as, like, as kids and we would see like you know all these people going on research trips and from like you know just childhood I was like oh wow like you know this is cool I, I might want to do that I, would, I might want to study why it has changed why there's no rainfall why they used to grow like crops like you know all sorts of crops and even now they do grow but the productivity is not that high because of the so that is something that kind of instilled in me but real uh, motivation came during my chemistry honors degree, where we just had one uh, module of environmental sciences. And the teacher was so good. Uh, I still remember uh, Professor uh, R. Rastogi, ma'am. She taught, taught, she taught us environmental sciences. And you know, out, out of all the organic and organic chemistry, even if I loved chemistry at that point, this subject was something I really kind of liked and, and, and thought, you know, this is the application of chemistry. I, I've spent hours and hours of doing 
practicals in the laboratory but like where is it, where is all the chemicals going in like you know i should know where it's i mean i understand people are you know making um, inventions and you know they're, they're making all sorts of compound and stuff but my calling was uh, looking at nature and um, also because of the background i come from uh, was that so uh, look uh, that one module really changed uh, of me looking at chemistry in terms of uh, also like you know rainfall climate and in in that perspective so it changed that yeah my phd advisor absolutely i mean he he is the most uh, difficult person to <laughs> deal with but again the scientific acumen that he has and also the way his his work ethics so he's he's very uh, rude like you know you just tell it in on your face that oh it's a trash whatever you written but then like his his words of wisdom even if he's saying trash there's the kind of uh, training that you get i got over the years and you know there were times when my, my samples were like one and a half years of uh, hard work that i put in like you know in, la- in the lab working doing research uh, it all went to waste because of some like you know scientific problems and and i was like in his room in tears and he was like you know yama what doesn't kill you makes you stronger why are you crying just start again like just go i have no sympathies and i think that i mean i was at a point where i was about to quit and then when he said that i was like okay i mean we can I, it, it is doable i can do it and uh, and perseverance is something like you know i've seen him uh you know through uh, i mean his, he had family problems and everything but then the way uh, professor david hodel the way he handles his uh research uh work along with like you know whatever happens is he is really is he is the best researcher that i've ever seen and i would like i aspire to be uh, like him if i can be so yeah so he is he is at a great in when his passion for science i mean you know in india uh, the problem what i have faced is that people say if you don't publish you perish like you have to keep publishing and when i went there in my first year i told him david i have to publish and he said wait like you are here to do science you may or may not be able to publish in 3 years so i think the the whole outlook was changed like you know because it was not so much of uh, the outcome oriented it was more to understand science it was more to understand climate processes or contribute uh, uh, so yeah so i think he really influenced me in my scientific career yeah there are two actually so one was um, so i mean i know i was of, of course over the moon when i had offers from both cambridge and oxford in terms of phd but uh, but this project in cambridge was really interesting because of the archaeological implications one and societal implications that climate might have and the second thing was that uh, i was interviewed by uh, the bill and melinda gates foundation for uh, the fellowship phd fellowship so now bill and melinda gates foundation they do fund phds but then it's it's like they have a limited number of seats and it's for globally like it's not it's not allocated like two indians or three and if the indians do well they would get it it's 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 a it's an international sort of competition so when i got that uh, again i was the first one first one doing in earth and my uncle sort of sciences uh, doing that and when they when when i got that it was a changing like game changing for me because um, get, getting like funding in the us universities relatively and uh, I, i won't say easier but if you get admission you get do get funding but uh, doing a project that you love and getting somebody to fund it and gates uh, bill gates um, gates foundation did fund it and so that was one changing point uh, in my career that kind of you know gave me a good start now after that after my phd and when i was in singapore i was uh, invited to give a plenary talk on monsoon rainfall now there are several experts monsoon ex- experts like all over the world but being like you know a young um, uh, early career uh, research per- person and i when i was invited in sydney to give a talk on monsoon variability i got the visible the kind of visibility that i got and that that's really a milestone because people got to know me i mean people had read my papers but there are other several like thousands and hundreds of thousands of publications out there on monsoon but then just like you know Uh, being invited to that this international conference which happens every 3 years it's not even like every year so it was really like prestigious to be uh, invited and my talk was very well received and um, that really gave me the visibility to the extent that only like last month i was uh, i'm now uh, on the editorial board of nature one of the nature uh, journals now this is the highest scientific journal that uh, that we have and you know i'm on the editorial board looking at monsoon paper publication the world so i think that was really uh, like you know milestone that uh, you know that was kind of at at the right time uh, in my career uh, when i was thinking that it's it is sort of a break in my career having to 
uh, children back to back, like, you know, within a span of three years, that thing kind of kept me going. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was a great milestone that happened. It's very objective, it changes. Like, you know, with, with time it changes. So when I was a PhD student, was, for me, it was to like, you know, I have to publish really two good papers and do good science. That is really like, you know, the question that we have set out to uh, should be answered, like whether or not <laughs> uh, Indus Valley civilization was impacted by this climate. So it was, so I think success, again, it changes with time. And uh, uh, so at this, uh, at that point of time, it was more, more like, you know, I have to do a good PhD and, uh, uh, but it, it is what gives you happiness at the end of the day. I, that is what I feel like, because right now, I mean, I, I do have PhD students, but I also have uh, two children to look after. So success for me would be, they are happy at the end of the day. Like, you know, I'm always worried if the nanny is taking care of them. So it changes, like I said, it changes with time. Failures, yes. I mean, if you're not able to, uh, you know, uh, what, what you think or what you set out to do, if you're not able to do it. I call it as failure. But then again, I mean, uh, failures is a way to learn. So, you know, you shouldn't have done it that way. It could have been done this way. So like, you know, you cannot be, so this is something again, I've learned from David, like, you know, failure is also a failed experiment is also a, a kind of a teacher. Like, you know, you can know that this is, this shouldn't have been done. Like, you know, I should have done it the other way, or you know that this is the wrong way or, you know, so, um, uh, so yeah, uh, but, but again, it changes success and failures. It changes uh, with time where you are in life. One would be just do what your heart says, like do go by your calling. I mean, if, uh, if you're really interested in something, you know, like they say, like the universe conspires uh, uh, to, for you to get it. So it's really like do, I mean, I understand it's, there are a lot of hardship for women. I mean, I've gone through my, you know, my set of hardships and to the extent when I had two daughters, I was laid off. Uh, this is Singapore. I mean, not, I'm not even talking about India. So, you know, it is global. It's not even like, you know, Indian women or in India. I was laid off that, you know, you're not being productive and stuff. So where the maternity leave was only two months. So just, I, I joined after two months. I, of course, it was not as well. So, you know, we have our own set of uh, hardships. But again, resilience is something that is there in, in all women. That is there. I mean, as compared to men, I think it's, it's, it's in our system. It is inbuilt. Uh, but resilience is one quality. We just have to bring it out. And if you really want it, you just work towards it. There would be failures, definitely. But then, you know, if you really wanted it, work towards it, you would definitely get it. And uh, you just have to work harder. And keeping in mind that there could be failures and there could be setbacks, but you have to take it in, in the right uh, um, uh, way. <laughs> oh, that uh, is something I'm, I don't know. I mean, I never look back. The thing is like, you know, I, I, I never look back. Uh, I, whatever I've done is just, you know, the choices that I've made, uh, these were very informed and thought of choices uh, right from schooling and right so in, in school there was a, an option of take, 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 either taking maths or biology and I was confused and I was like Baba I want to take both what's the problem so I was the only one who took both so I would so they were like the courses were kind of devised around it and then which is kind of what um, <laughs> like you kind know, of uh, prepared me well to do a, a diverse subject like environment sciences where you need physics principles mathematics and also biology to understand the impact so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say supreme like there's something that I would change because I uh, these were all informed choices, something I thought about, discussed with people. And really, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I don't consider myself as like, you know, very bright, but I, I, I've been working hard for sure. So I've been I've been at it. If I want something, I'll work uh, day and night. So uh, and I, I usually get it like, oh, if not, uh, so, for example, after my PhD, I was more focused on getting the publications out after the science was all done. We thought, okay, let it publish, let it publish. But uh, the publication time was so long that I was done with my PhD. I had my degree, but I had no job. And the publications were still. So, you know, I mean, one thing was I could have stayed in the UK. I had the visa. And maybe that would have given me more opportunities to, you know, look for jobs and stuff. I came back home. I thought I would stay with my parents so sometimes I this is the only thing that I think that you know I did go to France after that so after, after spending eight months in India I did go back but then like you know sometimes I think oh maybe I should have stayed there and utilized those eight but then you know looking back like I don't think I mean there's some anything I would change I mean I had my time with my parents and which was required so yeah nothing actually <laughs> um, I, I yeah these are the choices I've made and I have to
it is i'm a, that is something i'm still working on supreme you know coming back because we have recently it's, it's less than a year that we have moved back to india after 15 years abroad and, and uh, both me and my husband and with two daughters who who like you know so i'm still working on it uh, and what i'm trying to do now is keeping like you know extra i'm i'm not taking too much on my plate at the moment because i know i have responsibilities towards my daughter who is really young who need me at least now so that means i'm trying to make it sustainable because you know i have i have my teach to students who are joining in now so i have my responsibilities to guide them as well at the same time i have some teaching responsibilities i have some institute uh, uh, responsibility in terms of administrative duties and all but personal life so i'm trying to make a balance in uh, you know making so that like you know my my daughter is starting school and so you know i'm it, i'm still trying to figure out the best way i i don't know if i have uh, aced it yet but i'm trying to i mean there are times so my younger one doesn't sleep at night so it's only after in the sleep that i work so it's after like midnight that i start working actually and then in the morning my daughter has to go to school at 7 so i have to wake up so i'm still like trying trying to find out ways uh, to manage it so yeah uh, it's still work in progress i would say yeah, sustainability in terms of you know maintaining my personal and fresh, uh, uh, professional life right from so i i'll just give an example actually that came from our uh, meeting the uh, felicitation function uh, that happened at uh, british uh, embassy british uh, uh, high commission's residence so uh, there was some <laughs> sorry i have a bad <coughs> oh excuse me um so there was somebody from this cons- transport consultancy uh, uh, and they approached me uh or refer like you know with that reference that you were there and they heard me speak and they would want to know how rainfall has changed let's say in the last 100 years because they are a transport consultancy and what they do is they uh they i mean their trucks like they they move commodities uh, all over india and you know sometimes there's this rainfall for example chennai floods was something they didn't predict and they had like you know tons of you know i don't know what i don't remember what commodity was it but like there was a huge uh, loss so they would want so now the investors are asking can you tell me how it will change in 50 years so can we can plan our way work around it? like floods for example or rain rains for example now to know that you would have to see how it is change is there a cyclicity is there a pattern in understand is the rainfall i mean to i mean everything for example india is an agricultural uh, based uh, economy i mean agriculture a, a small uh, 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 rainfall if the rainfall decreases by a small amount it impacts hugely largely on the agriculture in india and then you know food security and everything is based on agriculture so i mean i was the reason why i was uh, citing transport consultancy is like people are getting more aware people are getting more affected so you know they say they he was saying that you know like 2% might sound like a very small number but in terms of the, the commodity 2% of uh, losses 2% it's huge so for them so they cons- they they wanted to know can you give us how it has changed in the past 100 years can you let us know and we can we'll somehow kind of try to project or look at the cyclicity or any pattern that is in the rainfall so now this is this is a very informed uh, london based consultancy but then i i think these kind of studies would inform the farmers and there there are the farmers that you know they can plan their crops accordingly that you know okay next 5 years the rainfall would would be this much percent or would not be as good or or something something that uh, uh, indian meteorological department has been doing so we but we would predict more longer term rather than just this year so that they can plan in advance they can you know train their son or daughters uh, who would be farming in the future accordingly or you know that it's going to change in 50 years so it's going to change in 10 20 years so so it is directly uh, related uh, only thing is that we study we also take it stretch it back to really really long term like hundreds of years also so the, it has a direct uh, implication and people are now addressing it and acknowledging it um, more and more uh, including industry and government agencies again it, it again uh, 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 is very closely to what i said it would be to train uh, the young generation and particularly women in in this field of study not much is known about like how do you so how do you go to nasa not nobody knows like you know how do you how would you go to nasa like what study uh, do you need to uh, what are the principles or what basic study uh, so this this stream of science is not so popular so if in my lifetime if i am able to educate uh, students right from school i mean i'm giving a talk this saturday to delhi school students and uh, uh, it's it's a, again our treat uh, talk and just to letting them know that this sort of science interdisciplinary field does exist 
and what do you uh, what uh, you just need to have interest in uh, this. You can come come from basic science. So my goal would be to kind of train. Um, uh, coming back to India, my main goal was to train young generation in uh, climate studies and you know how to how to perform uh, uh, experiments and to, to understand the climate better. Because you know we know that by 2030 we're trying to decrease the uh, amount of carbon that we're emitting, and 2030 would be. Uh, a time reasonable time that I would have graduated some of the uh, PhD students. So to train them in the right uh, way to kind of contribute to this goal of you know 20, 30, I, I'm not sure how India is contributing in terms of you know getting the right training, uh, academic training to kind of understand and you know uh, implement uh, to achieve that sustainable goal uh, that that is uh, uh, anticipated by uh, the IPCC reports and also various agreements, Paris Climate Agreement. So. So I would, I would actually, my, my goal is to just train them and, uh, uh, you know, inform or uh, uh, educate them in, the, in this field. Um, uh, being an academic, I mean, I think uh, all of the uh, academic students in India, would, would uh, you know, that's their goal. Uh, that's their ultimate goal, uh, to train the future generation in a way, because I've got training from uh, Indian, Indian institution and also abroad, and you know, I've been abroad for some time. So I know, like, you know, kind of pick the, so I, I have a, a kind of set uh, of, not rules, but a protocol that I, I would want to follow that, you know, uh, not exactly Indian, not exactly about, but kind of something that I've devised that I would like to implement and train um, graduate future generations who could contribute to sustainable uh, growth. In fact, like, you know, this is a funny thing that I also, so I met the PSA in that uh, event and I work on this instrument called the, called the uh, stable isotope mass spectrometer it's called it's it's a it's an instrument where we use uh, to generate isotope records and stuff so chemistry stream, chemical analytical stream. so it it's uh, it falls about uh, over two crores and I was like uh, I met him uh, and I asked you know do you uh, uh, I would like to establish a, a center for excellence for climate study uh, in Delhi and Delhi is some uh, Delhi is capital national capital and it would be accessible and so so you know I would want to uh, like 10 20 years down the line I would want to have India or I mean there are I'm not saying they're not they're not they don't we don't have iron investment in India we do have but they are kind of scattered and this they, the facilities are scattered all over India so I would like to have one place or one center like the Godwin something like Godwin Research Laboratory in Cambridge where we had everything under one roof. And we could conduct, I mean, this is a really important field of study. So, you know, as much as we are investing in uh, engineering or, uh, you know, pure engineering or pure sciences, we really need to have one, you know, uh, like, you know, one uh, center for excellence or uh, uh, where, where we could uh, conduct such studies. Um, and I, IIT Delhi uh, could house one of those. So I did share this vision. And 20 years down the line, I would want to be, like, you know, I, if, if I am the director, I would, I know how I would run it, but I would want to be a part of it in some way or the other, if I can contribute in any way in setting that up or, you know, my people, others, uh, other specialists are welcome. There. So, yeah, so that is something I would want to see if I can contribute in that. that um, yeah, I mean, I've never been on a research cruise, scientific research cruise. So what uh, they go out in the sea, like out of like nowhere, somewhere in the middle of Atlantic, for instance, critical uh, places, and they drill ocean cores. Now that is five kilometers under water, and they put like coring device, and they stay uh, on uh, they stay uh, uh, on in sea for like you know months or a year or something. So that research crew itself, I mean, it's very easy to go. I haven't had a chance because of personal commitments and stuff. But I would want to go. So I'm just waiting for my daughters to grow up and spend six months at sea. And just, you know, just drilling important cores and that those sediment uh, soil that, you know, ocean bed has, that, ha that has like really fresh, precious and critical information for how climate has changed. For example, how did down the dinosaur exist? I mean, there's all sorts of theory, volcanic eruptions, meteorite, uh, you know, there was a meteorite attack or something. But like, we don't know for, for sure, like what happened, how did the atmospheric uh, composition change? How did the land? So going there and getting that information uh, would be like something I would like to do. I mean, it might sound too, I don't know, too scientific, not so thrilling to you, but uh, that is really like, you know, amazing how you can spend six months that and also spending time in, on Antarctica and looking at ice cores. So that is like six months in Antarctica, like, you know, just living on ice and, uh, 
I mean, it, it's doable. It's not like it's not doable, but it's just that you just have to find the time and uh, and go. So I would want to do that. That's on my bucket list. Before I retire, I would definitely uh, bring in samples and want Indian people to work on it, uh, especially monsoon, for example. You know, people there have been research cruises all around peninsular India, but not many Indians were involved. I mean, it was mainly led by uh, NSF, uh, the National Science Foundation in the US, and there were like a couple of Indians as well. But like you know, having an Indian uh, <laughs> battalion going there, like you know, uh, more more sort of Indian representation. And by that time, by the time I'll go, I'll be going. I, I guess I would have graduated some PhD students who are ready to you know kind of equipped with the right set of skill set. And yeah, so that is something I, I would want to do definitely. Yeah, I think my passion for uh, doing um, uh, uh, something related to environment. You know, I am I am an outdoor person. I've been an athlete. I mean, I was a state level uh, uh, sprinter. So I've been an athlete. I like doing hardship, like physical hardship. I like to like you know go in the middle of the desert and look at look for lake beds. So now these are uh, there are lake sand dunes sitting on it. But if you get a you know excavator and you would see shells. So, you know, there used to be lakes uh, on the Thar Desert margin. So now the margin is expanding. So just the fact that, you know, there was a lake sitting on it and now there's sand dunes there. Like there used to be a lake and now there's sand dunes. I mean, it's just so uh, fascinating for me. And just to understand why did they go away? Like why, what happened? Like why, why, first of all, why did the lake appear in the first instance? Like, and then, and then what, what happened? Why did the lake uh, disappear? So just, uh, so that, I mean, just, that keeps me going. I mean, I mean, which is something that comes from my PhD uh, advisor. I'm not looking in terms of you know I, I'll publish in science, I'll publish in nature. I just move for the passion for the fact that I want to understand the you know unravel the mysteries of nature and understand how Earth is changing around me. So uh, or how climate is uh, around me is changing. And in India, there's so much not studied. Like there's so uh, pristine uh, places to go looking at uh, stuff. And India has seen a change of in terms of archaeology and history, India has seen change of kingdoms, and it was all about uh, getting poor resources, water resources, more resources, more food. You know, that's how the kingdom flourished. So, uh, you know, barter system and all that, they would have more food, more good. And it was all intricately linked to how the rainfall and you know, what were the environment like, how rain, uh, what kind of rain the they rains that they were getting. So, you know, um, and what, what were the temperatures like in that region. So. Um, so yeah, so uh, if, whether the region was livable or not. So just those uh, things and how it has changed in the past and how landscape changed over, over years uh, is just so, uh, I don't know, it's just so inspiring for me. And I'm just passionate about it and I can go on and on about this. So this just keeps me going. It's just, I mean, of course, when I, mean, I see my children, uh, you know, both my daughters and, you know, I would want, I took my dad also on the field and I was like, oh, see, there was a lake and there's no lake now. So, you know, it, it's that. And I try, try and uh, share my passion to my children as well. I mean, they they also come, come to the field. At least the, the older one has gone out to Haryana to see this. So, you know, um, yeah, that just keeps me going. I, mean, I don't I don't need any anything big. So I only, like, you know, all the budget also and finance is all planned around my, I guess, my passion for environment and, you know, uh, climate change, I guess. But the passion came from my father, my parents. So my father would, like, explain, right, do you know why this pulka is, uh, you know, uh, it's not flat and it's, you know, what, what do you know what is latent heat? Like, you know, it came from normal uh, daily life. My father was a science graduate, so he would teach me science with me and all of us in fact science uh, uh the principles at home like you know do you know why this is flying and why this is not or something like that and because we were four of us it was always like a party at home so a classroom in, in itself so younger one is was too young my brother but then three of us at least like really close these space so it came from there from my uh, advisor it streamlined i then i knew exactly what i wanted to do i i like i would like to go like you know i wanted to go scuba diving, bring in coral reefs, like, you know, understand how they are changing. And I want to do everything, but it's streamlined into what sort of skill set I need to develop. What is that I need to equip myself to do this kind of research. So it's streamlined from my advisor. Uh, but the kind of the seed was uh, sowed by my parents, I guess, you know, back when we were really young. Yeah, I mean, I, everything, I mean, like I said, like, you know, even a fulga roti, when you, when you make it, um, I, and, you know, you, it, it Kind of blows up and so he was like why do you think this blows up and like that gas is going inside he said no it's the water that is being evaporated and you know so that's why the steam and that's why 
and they, oh, also like you know, I was burnt once with steam, and uh, and I was like, Papa, I thought this is air that's coming out, and he said, No, because you know the latent heat of water is so high that you know you get burnt, even like you know, burnt badly, you know, even worse than normal hot water because you know it's steam and has so you know just little things that you know I got burnt by steam and not hot water. What's the difference? I, to me, it was the same, but just the latent heat of this and. Like, you know, so the thing is, like in my house, my, my home, my parents, they, my parents, my dad would cook because he would go to office and he would cook also. So he'd spend time in kitchen and taking care of us while my mom is braiding uh, mark sheets. Like, you know, uh, so he's doing that work also. She would also cook, but it was, it was never like, so when somebody tells me that, you know, oh, do you, who, do, who cooks for you? I was like, yeah, both of us, like whoever gets time, because I've always seen it like that. So I've always seen my dad cooking, mostly my dad cooking, not so much my mom. So while in the kitchen, she, he would inv involve us also. Oh, why don't you do this? Why do you think that when the ri rice is cooking, that uh, uh, plate on top is like, you know, it's moving and, you know, and these are examples when we learned as young kids, like really young kids. So we knew about specific heat capacity of water when we were like, you know, in really young. So all those little things and, uh, I mean, no, of course, that doesn't uh, uh, that started uh, my, my love for science, but then I mean later on it you know it grew with time and and, and stuff. So I think most of the uh, principles of chemistry and science came from the kitchen because we spent a lot of time after our school. My my dad when he would come back from work, he would spend a lot of time in the kitchen cooking dinner, and we would be with him you know playing and you know learning things. So yeah, from the kitchen. And from, um, I dance. Okay. I am a trained Kathak dancer. So I not so much now and I really want to go, uh, go back and dance more. So even after my PhD, when I did not have a job, I came back and I joined the, uh, in Lucknow, there's this Bhat Khande uh, Kathak uh, uh, Dance Academy. So I joined that and I started polishing back my, uh, so in school I was a regular, uh, you know, I used to go there. But I took a workshop and two months of uh, crash course sort of a thing. I don't uh, perform so much now on stage but for my own uh, like you know I, I dance I really like to dance um, and uh, Kathak and all, all sorts of dance but Kathak is like you know something I've, I've learned and I really enjoy doing it as well and uh, so yeah so dancing is something I, that really like you know, takes everything off and now also my kids like just spending time and reading stories to them also uh, that's that's I'm not giving it to them they're giving it to me because it's so relaxing I forget about my passion because, you know, sometimes you go, go so much into your passion that you just forget about uh, family. And they, and that's why I said, like, I'm still trying to balance and I'm still trying, navigating and trying trying to find the right balance. And uh, so I'm realizing that the more time I spend with my kids, especially at night and evenings, reading to them and dancing with them, uh, you know, they're, my daughters are very bad dancers, but, you know, I'm trying to train them, both born with left two left legs or something but you know but um, yeah no I dance and uh, spend time with my kids so that is something I do for myself and not uh, uh, yeah. that really cheers me up it takes me out of this uh, whole passion and because sometimes it's just uh, because you want to do so many things and you know and you said oh I have to do this in, in, in such a short time as as professors as uh, you know as researchers we do not have a time limit I mean there, yes there are there are uh, unlike unlike corporate uh, where you have you have to deliver for us it's like we're doing it for ourselves like you know you are, we are i'm publishing there are so many papers out there Dixit et al so you know it's in my name i'm doing it for myself i mean yes there are some uh, official commitments that we have to do but you know you, you can you can still do a sarkari nokri at iit delhi you're, you're you know after all working for government but then you know because of your passion you sometimes so go so much into it and you need these kind of breaks and you go home just forget about everything so till the time they're asleep just give time and you know do you know, whatever you want. so i like to dance with my daughters you know <laughs> it's okay it might sound like uh, i want to be a, into administration uh, but you know this is something i've dreamt that I'll, i'm the director of iit it might again it might sound but then, you know, it, it's not so much for being the director, but it's for making reforms in the kind of education that, uh, that I see that is happening. Like, you know, people would come here and they, oh yeah, I've got JE, IIT JE rank this. And uh, again, I mean, it's not, again, it's not uh, too, uh, 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 it's not too unrelated to what I do. It, I would still do research, environment related research and, you know, but then, uh, I also would like to, uh, I, mean, I, 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 
like to do some sort of administration as well because you know i've seen how universities work abroad how uh, institutes work abroad and why are they why is cambridge cambridge i mean of course it has 800 plus years of legacy but uh, how are how are they taught how are they uh, trained i mean right after school okay i mean everybody comes with a fresh like you know state and you can you can mold them in in whatever way and you know i mean it, there's no i mean the brains here in india they are one of the best ones i'm not saying and the course is also but there are certain i mean i would like to i don't know what reforms but like i sometimes dream and you know i am the director of an institute and i'll run it the way like taking best of everything not not india is not bad whatever the, the kind of education i mean i was educated here and you know, i i really uh, is is good but that is something i would uh, ultimately would want to see director of lab director of uh, some sort of authority to make some uh, like you know reforms and uh, that would uh, first of all include more uh, women uh, in science you know by the time you know you're 35 plus you you have kids there are maternity duties there are others and you know so th- I I faced my was laid off um, when I had my first child. I had no job for a month in Singapore. And just because I had a child and I was not able to uh, so this is something so it reforms on those sides. For example when I met the PSA I was like wow this man is so powerful that if I kind of you know request about this facility he said okay you think about it and it, so something like you know in that position so I was like that day only I was like oh wow like you know, so it hasn't been like you know just broken up and uh, like this but this is something I uh, in the back of my mind i'm not dream but you know there's something that goes on that i would want to also be involved in the government uh, as an academic academic involved in the government policy making sort of so that i can do not just education at home but also like you know something environment related policies and these need to be these needs of informed um uh, in, uh, in uh, opinions so you know uh, so advisory advisory or you know that sort of thing so i would also want to do that so that is something i've dreamed like not this thought of not dreamt i would say but uh, yeah